اہم مسئلے پر بات کرنے کے لیے ہم نے اسٹوڈیو میں دعوت دی ہے امریکہ کے پاکستان میں سفیر امبیسڈر کیمرون منٹر کو جو کہ اس وقت ہمارے ساتھ اسٹوڈیوز میں موجود ہے بہت بہت شکریہ تھینک یو سو مچ امبیسڈر فار بینگ ہیئر اینڈ ریئلی اپریشیٹ It's a pleasure being here with you and it's great to be in Karachi and to uh, see how the people of your country are uh, looking forward to the future. Uh, it's an education for me always when I'm here. Thank you. Great. One week now since Osama's uh, death, uh, there seemed to be a convergence uh, between Pakistan, Pakistani pe public opinion and U.S. public opinion, though a distaste, distasteful uh, convergence that uh, uh, we are touching the lowest ebb of our relationship. Pak-U.S. relationship is, uh, is, it, is it at its lowest ebb uh, uh, in the recent uh, memory. Where do we go from here? Well, I disagree, I think, with your premise that we're at our lowest ebb. I think there is a convergence between the Pakistani public and the American public. Both of them want answers. Both of them want to know uh, from the uh, Pakistani leadership about that very tough question that's come up about uh, whether the Pakistani leadership knew about Osama being here, and uh, if not, uh, uh, why not? And those kind of questions need to be answered. But where I'm optimistic, and I think the American public is optimistic, is we're at an opportunity rather than a challenge. We're at a time where if those questions can be answered openly and honestly, it can be an opportunity for us to work together in the future uh, better than we have in the past. It's an op a time for us to think of moving ahead. It's really the only alternative at this point. Let's move ahead together in the wake of the uh, Osama bin Laden killing. Uh, but when you say that whether Pakistan leadership uh, knew or not, uh, I'll take you back to uh, President Obama's statements uh, just after uh, Osama's death, mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. where he said that the Pakistani not only knew, but they actually helped us. Let me play it for you. It's important to note that our counterterrorism cooperation with Pakistan helped lead us to bin Laden and the compound where he was hiding. Not only to bin Laden, but actually to the compound. What is he saying? What he's saying is we have a long and rich history between the CIA and the ISI of cooperation, just as we had in broad fields, military, civilian, economic. We have a lot of history of working together. And this uh, cooperation goes back many years and has been very, very fruitful. I think what we need to focus on is the fact that we've worked together, we've gotten results together, and they've led to this triumph. This is really a triumph. When I've talked to people here, the first words out of their mouths is, congratulations. This is a great day for Pakistan, a great day for America. And what I think the president's talking about is, we have a lot we've done together. It's a good thing. And also on this case, which led you is to the compound. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? There's a law, there's any number of things. If you listen to uh, Tom Donilon, our national security advisor, who was on television yesterday, an intelligence operation takes a number of factors into account. These are the factors of piecing together the trails of these people, the trails of these people as they've killed Pakistanis, as they've killed uh, people around the world. We look to our Pakistani friends and to our friends around the world to get these clues that led us to this compound. But there seemed to be a sharp contrast in what uh, President Obama is saying in his first uh, maiden address on this issue and what uh, CIA Director Len Panetta mm -hmm. said. Uh, let me quote uh, you, Len Panetta, when he spoke to Time magazine. He said, mm -hmm. it was decided that any effort to work with the Pakistanis would jeopardize the mission. They might alert the targets. It's a very, very serious allegation. You're talking about uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the country and, and the agency, which you have worked together. You, you worked together and you got hold of a, a whole bunch of Al-Qaeda together. The agency was bombed right. five times. It has it's a st huge sacrifices. And then you're making a very serious allegation. You are saying that if we would have uh, told them, they would have alerted the, the leadership. It means that uh, General Pasha would have alerted Osama bin Laden very serious. No, this is not what Mr. Panetta is saying. What he's saying is when you have an operation that is this serious, you have a need for what we call operational security. And operational security means very few people can know because for the success of this operation, which was a success for Pakistan and a success for America, we needed the tightest possible security. We got it. We were successful. It's good for Pakistan and it's good for us. And the, the timing to, to go after him, the day, the date, uh, we understand that the U.S. was tracking him for the last seven months, eight mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. Was it a political decision? I don't know. It's an intelligence issue. That kind of decision was made at, at uh, something we don't discuss about. But it seems that there, the, 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 it was a whole period of several months mm -hmm. that to go after this fellow 
was was a decision which 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 was a political now it's a it's an intelligence decision and i can't comment on that and what about uh, the remaining intelligence uh, decisions what if similar intelligence is available on ayman al safari mm -hmm. or mullah umar should we brace for another u.s attack of this sort here's what i'm hoping i'm hoping that as we decide to work together as this healthy debate takes place in this country about how we can and should cooperate because we share the goals of, of of going after the terrorists that we can see uh, efforts on all sides from the pakistani side from our side to work together to go after these people who are a scourge for all of our people just a couple miles from here for example there are people in the hospital in the navy hospital who suffered uh, uh, injury, even death, because of these attacks here in Karachi, these Navy, Navy personnel. This is a terrible thing. Our hearts go out to these people because we understand what kind of loss these people are. We understand what kind of price Pakistan has paid. And for us to be able to work with Pakistan, to go after number two or three, four, five, all these people, to go after the people who really challenge not only our safety, but the kind of things we have in common, our values. So are, That's you, really saying, are you saying that uh, if there is a actionable intelligence on uh, Mullah Umar or Dr. Zawari, it will be a cooperative effort or it will be a unilateral action. Uh, what are you saying? Here's what I'm saying. We are committed to fighting this terrorism. Our friends in Pakistan are committed to exactly the same thing. The decision from Pakistan has to be, can we do this together? Can we, can we work together as we should, as we're both committed to? That's what I'm saying. I think it can happen. This is not the first time that the uh, U.S. actually breached the territorial integrity of Pakistan. We have been seeing it all along last year and this year and, and, and before that. Uh, and uh, the U.S. think tanks, experts are saying that the drone attacks on Pakistan yielding result, but it's very limited as far as the senior leadership concerned. Mm -hmm. Only 2 percent people who were on the top list of the U a top wanted list of U.S. were actually killed last year. Yet we see these attacks and uh, some militants are killed, but uh, men mm. are killed, women killed, old killed, children killed, women killed. What U.S. has to say to these people who lost their loved ones in these daily attacks? Mm. Well, I'm not going to comment on an intelligence issue like that, just to say that we're all fighting terror in the way we can. We call on the Pakistanis to have an open and honest debate about the way they do this so that we can be more effective working together. But uh, at the same time, the U.S. is, is, is doing this. And uh, uh, even within U.S., people are questioning this, that uh, U.S. planes enter into Pakistani airspace, they, they, they carry out these attacks. And we have seen over the last three mm -hmm. years, there's a serious upsurge in all this. You know, uh, before, let's see, b b between uh, 2001 and 2008, we have seen a, f a few dozen, maybe a few uh, bunch of raids. But since the change of government here, since democracy came here, we have seen a serious escalation in drone strikes. Mm -hmm. Last year only there were 118, and in 2008 there were only 33. Uh, every week we are seeing at least two attacks. The Parliament of Pakistan, the elected National Assembly, the, the Senate has unanimously passed resolution against these attacks, requesting, urging, asking U.S. not to do that. But U.S. is not listening. Is it a sharp rebuke to democracy and elected Parliament of Pakistan? Here, because in Pakistan, the Pakistanis I consider my friends, in the six months I've been here, we were talking, it's been an eventful six months, I've been given nothing but honest and open advice. And let me give my honest and open advice back. The real issue here, the real issue for Pakistan is the internal Pakistani debate about the future of where Pakistan is going. It's healthy, and I admire those in the press who have asked the tough questions, yourself included. I recall that there was an interview in which a very wise Pakistani said, why are we not on the road to being a country like Malaysia? And that wise person was you. This question is, where are we going? That's the question that I think is the way to go. But at talk. the same time, U.S. being uh, such a critical, uh, important ally and, and, a, and such a big democracy, not listening to the elected parliament. I mean, there has to be some accommodation. It's not that what you think is, is correct. You have to listen to the voice of the people of Pakistan also. If they mm -hmm. say that drones, please spare us, then you have to listen. You have to show some accommodation. We're listening. 
And I think that the way we can get past this question that's raised in the minds of Pakistanis that somehow Americans don't listen is to have more dialogue. Let's have dialogue at the highest level. Let's have your people have conversations like when General Pasha went to talk with Panetta at, uh, on uh, April 11th. Let's have more talks. I hope our senior people can come and talk to you to talk about these issues. But let's make no mistake. This is only part of a broader dialogue that we have to have about the decisions Pakistan can make to work with us, we hope, as friends in the war on terror. Sure we can. Uh, 